A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hey buddy! Hey! <laughs> Oh, it's cold. Oh, hello everybody. And uh, it is about 44 hours since I shot that silly little travel montage on my phone. Uh, Mass has brought me to this bridge here and uh, there are a couple of ships in the background that I should probably try and get in my shot. Anyway, in the last 44 hours, uh, I have been exploring Copenhagen with my guide Mass and I thought I'd show you some of the shots I got with my, bear with me, uh, glove. No, my Ricoh GRX, which I brought with me because I thought it'd be a good companion for the, the street photography section of this trip in Copenhagen, but also because uh, I only had hand luggage on the plane. I'm cheap. So yeah, this video is, is a summation of my time in Copenhagen with Mass and uh, I got some nice photos, I think. Yes, 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 yes. I was mostly taking photos of bicycles in Copenhagen. Uh, some of them with a fairly slow shutter speed, which uh, the Ricoh affords by way of the fact that it's got an inbuilt ND filter and fantastic stabilization. Uh, didn't always help me, but sometimes I got some shots that I liked. Uh, I'm on a ferry now, by the way. We're heading to an island that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Uh, well, as you can see, I'm no longer on a ferry in Denmark, um, sadly. I had a brilliant sleep on that ferry, so I wish I still was. Very comfortable. Uh, anyway, one of the things that really got me about Copenhagen was uh, the colour. Everywhere I went, there was colour. And on grey, gloomy days, which is what we had for the most part when I was there, it's so nice to be able to still photograph colour uh, when the light isn't, isn't playing ball. And yeah, it was just everywhere, particularly in my favorite area of Copenhagen that we went to, which is called, and I'm gonna absolutely butcher this because I can't remember how Mass said to pronounce it. It's called Nibodir. Nibodir. Is that right? Basically, it's rows and rows and rows of bright orange houses. Uh, many of them were pretty bikes outside. It's wonderful. And uh, essentially, I just camped out for 20 minutes on street corners, uh, waiting for people to come past to decorate my scene. And uh, it worked a couple of times, particularly that with this lady with a bright magenta coat on. Uh, that was fantastic. Probably my favorite photo from Copenhagen, that one. I loved it. And yet it wasn't just that area. Everywhere you looked, there was just a splash of color. And uh, it just makes for a really, really nice city to photograph. Although admittedly, I think because of areas like that, I ended up only really seeing color doesn't really make sense actually. I, I don't normally see black and white. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I ended up photographing things purely because they were flashes of colour, uh, regardless of whether they were pretty or whether they were like building sites. To the point where I think Mass started to get a bit confused slash concerned that uh, there was something wrong with me. And I ended up just playing up to it, just photographing literally anything 
that had some colour on it. What percentage of the stuff that I shot in Copenhagen was of any interest to you photographically? <laughs> One. <laughs> I'm bringing you to one of the most beautiful capitals on planet Earth and you're photographing fog lifts. There was, there was some brilliant roadworks. Uh, by the way, I did say all this when I was in Denmark, but uh, true to form on this channel, I had some sound issues. But yeah, this place and all the others that... Yeah, no idea what was happening there. Uh, luckily, other clips seem to be okay, so I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I, um, I just got my feet absolutely drenched in there, which is not ideal. It's the start of the day. Anyway, as you know, I pretty much live as a photographer nowadays uh, between 35 millimeters and 50 millimeters, or at least I think I do. And in the next video, as in now, uh, I shall be investigating that. But uh, the Ricoh is 40 millimeters. And I found that worked pretty well for somewhere like Copenhagen. I mean, there were times definitely where I would have liked to have been a little bit closer and there are definitely times where I wanted to take a couple of steps back as well and uh, sometimes obviously in cities you can do that other times it's not possible because you might fall into the river or you might fall off a bridge if you try and move from where you are but then I suppose that is the price you pay for having a tiny tiny little camera with a really capable sensor and a fantastically sharp lens at the same time it's going to be a fixed focal length and if I had to pick one focal length as I've talked about at length on this channel, I think it would probably be 40 millimeters. But yeah, the next video is basically about, um, I'll explain then. Yeah, I really like this little camera and the more time I spend with it, the more I like it. So much so that I have been thinking about picking up a, uh, a non X version, an original version, a 28 millimeter equivalent version. Sort of rhymes that. Just for the shots that, as I say, are sort of wider than 40 millimeters. And uh, there were some of those on that trip. However, on that trip, I decided to get those wider shots using my phone. This is uh, an iPhone 14 Pro. And I'll be honest, I was completely blown away by it. It was basically the first time I'd used it as a camera in anger. And uh, the 40 odd megapixel sensor, I was super skeptical of. But zooming into the images, I am genuinely blown away. And it's been a thing over the past few years, hasn't it? Uh, talking about whether or not phones are capable of replacing cameras now. And I think by and large, it's still a no. However, if you like to shoot at about 24 millimeters, if you typically do so in good light and you're not bothered about shallow depth of field, I think we're getting to the point where I would recommend this as your camera. It's super impressive. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Maybe I'll do a video on it at some point when I've, when I've had more chance to think about how to put words to it. Anyway, yes, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, there are a couple more videos to come from the Denmark trip. Hopefully they won't be affected by sound, but uh, a big thank you to Mass and his guidance through uh, Copenhagen and wider Denmark. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Do check out Mass's channel if you haven't already. I'm sure most of you have, but if you haven't, definitely check him out. Finally, a huge thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. Now, I have just looked at the analytics in the back end of my Squarespace website, and I've learned that last year, 0.86% of my viewers were from Denmark. Uh, not necessarily from Denmark, but they visited my website from Denmark, which means a good number of you, I suspect, will be able to correct me on my bad pronunciation. But uh, aside from fantastic analytics, Squarespace websites are just brilliant for showcasing your work in the way that you want it to be seen. They've got loads of templates. Uh, I've used one called Wells for the past five, six or seven years, something in that region. And so whether it's a portfolio that you're after or an online store or a blog, then Squarespace has got fantastic solutions. Uh, I'd recommend you try it out for free and you can do so by going to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase and to get 10% off that purchase, then you can go to squarespace.com forward slash James. And yeah, Squarespace integral to my business and I absolutely love that even a technophobe like me never gets stumped by it. It's all drag and drop and sliders and very, very simple to use. So definitely check it out. And uh, next week we shall be in another part of Denmark well, in some of the places that you've already seen, actually. Uh, but taking photos at what focal lengths, I wonder. Ooh. No suspense whatsoever. I'll see you then.